So I'm excited to share and announce the launch of Amazon Nova, which are our new state-of-the-art foundation models that deliver frontier intelligence and industry-leading price performance. Amazon has just made waves with this announcement of their groundbreaking frontier models. It's always exciting to see major players diving deeper into the AI space, and Amazon's entry adds a whole new dimension to the rapidly evolving landscape. Stick around because in this episode, we're diving deep into everything you need to know about Amazon's frontier models, their features, capabilities, and what this means for the future of AI. You won't want to miss it, but don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe to AI Gridlock for more AI updates. So in this intelligence set of models, there are four flavors. The first is micro, which is a text-only model, which means you feed it text and it outputs text. It's laser fast, very cost effective, and our internal builders are really enjoying it for a lot of their simple tasks. And then we have three flavors of multimodal models. And so multimodal models, you, imp you can input text or image or video and you output text. And so each of these are in ascending order of size and intelligence. The micro, light, and pro models are generally available today. The premier model will be available in the Q1 timeframe. So I'm gonna share a few benchmarks. I'll just say that we used external um, published benchmarks whenever we could, and when they weren't available, we did it ourselves. We published the methodology on our website so you can try and replicate it if you like. So I'll just share some of the uh, benchmarks. So on the micro model, you can see it is a very competitive model. We uh, if you look at the raw numbers relative to the, the leading uh, models in this class, um, you know, Llama and Google's Gemini, I think on the raw numbers, it's, uh, it, it benchmarks better on all the variables in, uh, versus Llama and 12 or 13 versus Gemini. But if you do statistical significance testing, which we did, we just took all the um, numbers that were overlapping uh, in the 90, 95% confidence interval, and we call those equal. So if you look at it that way, which I will moving forward, you can see that we um, are equal or better on all the benchmarks compared to Llama and Gemini in, these, in this class of models. If I look at the light model, it's a very similar story, very competitive. If you compare Nova Light to OpenAI's GPT-40 Mini, you can see that we're equal or better on 17 of the 19 benchmarks, equal or better on 17 of the 21 benchmarks versus Gemini, and then equal or better on Haiku 3.5 on 10 of the 12 benchmarks. Haiku isn't doing uh, images or video yet, so we couldn't benchmark on as many dimensions. But again, a very competitive model. And then if you look at Pro, same story. Uh, if you compare it to um, GPT-40, it's equal or better on 17 of the 20 benchmarks, it's equal or better on 16 of the 21 benchmarks versus Gemini. The very best model in this class of models is Sonnet V2 3.5. But even here, you can see that our pro model is equal or better on about half of those. And on the ones that are not, it's very competitive. And you're going to like the cost and the latency characteristics here. And then our premier model, which will be our largest multimodal model, will be available in the Q1 timeframe. Now, so that's four very competitive, compelling intelligence models. But there are some other things that I think you're gonna really like about these models. First, they're really cost effective. They're about 75% less expensive than the other leading models in Bedrock. Two, they are fast. They're the fastest models that you'll see with, res with respect to latency. We'll also um, uh, make the Nova models available in the SKU that uh, Peter was talking about last night in the late latency optimized inference SKU as well. They're very fast. And then they're not just integrated, they're just not in Bedrock, but they're integrated deeply with all the features in Bedrock that any model provider can use. It's just that this team took the time to do them. And so that means that you get fine tuning. Increasingly, a lot of our app builders for generative AI, they want to do fine tuning with labeled examples to make the applications perform better. You'll also be, um, the Nova models are also integrated with the distillation feature that Matt just talked about. So you can infuse intelligence of bigger models into smaller models that are more cost effective and lower latency. 
It's deeply integrated in Bedrock's knowledge bases so that you can use RAG to ground your answers in your own data. And then also, we have optimized these models to work with the proprietary systems and APIs so that you can actually do multiple orchestrated automatic steps, agentic behavior, much more easily with these models. So I think these are very compelling. I'm looking forward to getting, taking a shot at them and, and, and using them. Now, customers want to actually do more around generative AI than just with outputs that are text. They also have a lot of needs around images and around video. And there's lots of examples of it, but, but simple ones are advertising or marketing or trading materials. And so we've worked hard, you know, it's expensive. There aren't a lot of options out here. They're not easy to do yourself. And we've worked hard on this problem. And I'm excited to announce two more models for you. First is Amazon Nova Canvas, which is our state-of-the-art image generation model. And so Canvas, it it's, uh, allows you to input natural language text, get images back. They're beautiful images, they're studio quality images. Um, it allows you to edit images using natural language or text inputs. It gives you controls for color scheme and layout. It has a number of built-in controls for responsible use of AI, including watermarking for traceability, as well as content moderation to limit the generation of harmful content. And we, we benchmarked this as well. We tried to benchmark it versus some of the other state-of-the-art um, players in this space. In this case, we picked um, you know, typically what people consider the two leaders here, which are, um, you'll see Dolly 3 and Stable Diffusion 3.5. And we benchmarked on the two variables that matter most, which is image quality and instruction following. And you can see that Canvas outperforms both of them on both those dimensions. We also did a human evaluation where you saw similar types of results. So this is a compelling model. And then of course, we also want to allow you to have it be easy to generate video. And so we're excited to announce the launch of Amazon Nova Real, which is our state-of-the-art video generation model. So again, with Real, it's studio quality video. It's, it's really stunning videos that you can create. It gives you full control of the camera, lets you have motion control, lets you do panning, it lets you do 360 degree rotation and zoom. It also has built in um, AI controls um, for safe AI, including watermarking and content moderation. We'll launch it with the ability to do six second videos, which works really well for a lot of marketing and advertising on its way up to two minute videos in the next few months. We benchmarked this as well. There aren't really many um, video generation services that have an API, and then none of them have automated benchmarks. So we just took one of the, uh, we benchmarked with human evaluation versus one of the leaders here in, in Runway. And you're gonna see again that real benchmarks very favorably relative to others. So that's six new frontier models for you. What's gonna be next for us in Nova? Well, the first thing is the team is gonna be working really hard over the next year on the second generation of these models. But I also have a couple things that I thought I'd give you a sneak peek into. Um, the first is that in the Q1 timeframe, we anticipate giving you a speech-to-speech -speech model, which will allow you to input speech and get speech back very fluent, very fast. And then around mid-year, we're gonna give you an any-to-any -any model. So this is really multimodal to multimodal. So, so you'll be able to input text, speech, images, or video, and output text, speech, images, and video. This is the future of how frontier models are gonna be built and consumed. And we're really looking forward to giving this to you. So you may be asking yourself, how should I think about AWS's model strategy? They have very deep partnerships with a number of model providers. They have some of their own models now. And the way I would tell you to think about it is the way that we always provide you selection in everything we do, which is that we are gonna give you the broadest and best functionality you can find anywhere. And what that's gonna mean is it's gonna mean choice. The reality is 
that all of you are going to use different models for different reasons at different times, which, by the way, is the way the real world works. Human beings don't go to one human being for expertise in every single area. You have different human beings who are great at different things. You're going to sometimes be optimizing for coding, sometimes for math, sometimes for uh, integration with RAG, sometimes for agentic needs, sometimes for lower latency, sometimes for cost, most of the time for some combination of these. And at AWS, we are going to give you the very best combination of all of these, as we always do. And we think we've added some pretty interesting models to the mix today, but the great thing is, is that all of these models are available for you in Bedrock. And you can use them in whatever combination you want, and you can experiment, and you can change over time, and we will give you that selection and that choice today as well as in the future. So with that, I will say, have at it, Part two. giddy up, and back Amazon's back. frontier so models easy. aren't just here, they're making a strong impression. Performance-wise, they've already proven to be competitive. By examining the Artificial Analysis Quality Index, it's clear these models hold their own in a rapidly advancing market, performing at a commendable level. These models are carving out a solid place within the AI ecosystem, quickly becoming a go-to solution for many users. While a significant chunk of adoption might come from Amazon AWS customers, it's impressive how Amazon has managed to launch models that rival offerings from some of the biggest AI names in the industry. As Amazon continues to expand its AI ecosystem, the question isn't just about what these frontier models can do now, but how they'll evolve and shape the future. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to AI Gridlock. See you in the next one.